Do you know where to start when it comes to setting up for a tattoo? My dad does. Let's get into it. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're going to touch on a foundational essential. Setting up for a tattoo. Now, before we get started, I wanted to say thank you for everyone for your continued support on the channel. It really means everything to me. And I want to give a special shout out to Rob, who actually reached out to me on Instagram after watching my videos. And we had a nice conversation, and he's a fellow tattoo artist as well. Uh, if you want to check Rob out on Instagram, I'll also provide his Instagram account in the description below. I also wanted to make a shout out to his daughter, Delilah, and I appreciate you guys for your continued support and you guys coming and watching my videos. That being said, let's get into the video. Now, every artist sets up for their tattoo probably a little bit differently. And today we're just gonna go over some of the methods that I use when I set up my tattoos. So let's get started. Now, for those who don't know, I've had 15 years of experience in the healthcare profession. When I joined the military, I got started as a hospital corpsman, uh, and eventually I transitioned to be a surgical technologist, which is helping the surgeons out during surgeries. And one of the main concepts you had to keep in mind is aseptic technique and following universal precautions. And I believe that that segues into the practices that you should be following uh, for tattooing as well. And if you don't know what any of that is, it's essentially just reducing the transmission of microorganisms uh, and it's all part of like bloodborne pathogens as well. So that being said, I'll usually prep all the equipment that I'm using on my clients uh, by taking it all out and I don't even care if I washed my beds or my armrests or any equipment that I used like a day before or whatever. Whenever I have a client coming over, I will still wipe it down with a disinfectant wipe. And I don't use any disinfectant wipes that you could go get at like Target or anything like that. I get a medical grade disinfectant wipe, which is the Super Sandy Cloths. We were using a lot of these in the hospitals I was employed at. I know a lot of people will default to cavicide in the tattoo realm and industry. Uh, there's a lot of videos that I've watched where, you know, they, they talk about using cavicide, but um, there's there's different types of comparisons. This one seems to kill 30 microorganisms while cavicide is a little bit lower than that. And I guess some of the advantages of cavicide in this is cavicide wipes. It takes one minute of contact time to kill all the microorganisms. This one is about two minutes. So now carpet is definitely a huge no-no in the tattoo industry. The main reason for that is because you can't guarantee the cleanliness of carpeting. No matter if you vacuum or if if you steam clean it or whatever, it still has a large potential to harbor bacteria. This is why everyone usually opts for uh, a solid flooring. Unfortunately, in my case, my wife and I are still planning a studio that we're going to get in springtime. So for the time being, I have to use this flooring, but I lay down a protective barrier first before I have any type of clients in here. Yes, I understand that it's not optimal and I try to mitigate as much microorganisms or bacteria that could possibly cross-contaminate with any clientele. All right, so there you have it. Now let's bring in my tray for prepping. We make sure that we don clean gloves before we touch any of the disinfectant wipes. And I give the tray a complete wipe down. And now we let it sit for the manufacturer's instruction for use time, which is two minutes. And usually my next step is to use some sort of cling wrap uh, as a protective barrier for the equipment. Um, and in this case, I'm using something that you could probably find at the grocery store or whatever. Um, I do know that some other types of rolls of cling wrap are available that you can purchase just as long as you have a barrier set down. Um, and what I've found out too is the barrier um, isn't so great on its own if you don't use some sort of medium to uh, keep it tied down, uh, so to speak. So what I'll usually do is I will squirt some distilled water down first on the surface, and then I will use the clean wrap over that. And that seems to get the job done pretty well and efficiently. And as a very important note right now, I'm not using any other equipment because I'm actually not tattooing right now. 
but if I were using like the massage chair or a tattoo chair or the armrest that my client is going to have contact with throughout the procedure, I would be pretty much doing the same thing that I'm doing right now with the tray on that piece of equipment. So while we're waiting for this to dry, I wanted to make sure that I made that point that if I was using any other type of equipment, I would be wiping that down right now as well and letting that sit for the two minutes. Okay, so I will take my distilled water add a little bit to promote the cling wrap to stick. And then I will take a dental bib or a chucks pad, whatever you decide to use as an absorbent liner, and I will stick that on top. And then I will further use silk tape to secure all of these in place. Just like that. And then I'll start to set everything up. Now you can use paper towels. Uh, there are people who use shop towels, whatever absorbent liners you're going to use throughout the tattoo. I usually will set them up top on the upper left. I will then place my distilled water on the tray that is wrapped in barrier film. And then I will place my green soap solution on the tray. Now this is also the point in time where I will open up a tongue depressor, a sterile tongue depressor. And then I will grab some ink caps. And then whatever needles I am using, I will sometimes place them at this point in time too. And for the sake of this video, I am just using a needle that I've already had uncapped. At this point in time, I will use one of my inkies that I have for the ointment during the tattoo. And this is where my tongue depressor comes in handy. I will slather it onto my tray and then use some of the residual And then I will toss my tongue depressor. Now I've seen that some people like to use their tongue depressor on their tray while they stick their ink caps to it. Uh, I really just consider that a form of preference. Um, that's up to you, completely up to you. So now we can get to the portion where I will put my machine up here and we will put the proper protective barriers on that. Now for my machine, I use a jet black barrier for it. I usually cut it down probably around like here because I use disposable grips on my Bishop wand. And here are the grips that I use. Make sure that whenever you are opening things up for your field, for your tray, that you're looking at the expiration dates on them. Make sure that you don't use them if they are expired. Now, what I typically like to do with my Bishop wand is I kind of go in through the top. I line this up with where the grip screws on and I kind of give it a little twist. And I take my grip and secure that on there. And then I'm ready to take off this sticky part and wrap that back on itself. It'll be ready to turn on now. And now I am ready to use my machine. Uh, but first, obviously, we are missing out on some of the ink. So I have three of the caps lined up just to kind of simulate a gray wash. And for me, what I kind of typically use is I do a full cap of 100% black. And then I do one of like around 50% black and then one that's like 10%. And I will use the distilled water to fill up the caps that aren't 100% black. Um, some other things I will typically have up here. Um, sometimes I'll throw a my razor up here. Um, 
when it comes straight out of the bag, as well as like wrapped alcohol that I have right here. But yeah, with that being said, if I had some ink in my caps right now, we would all be ready to go so long as the other equipment is ready to go as well that's wrapped and um, the client has their stencil on. So there you have it. Um, it's kind of a brief rundown of how I set my, my tray up. If you guys have any other types of questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And if you kind of want to like run through maybe to like see what, what all the supplies are that I use, uh, just let me know and maybe we can make a video about that. I do want to say that it's also very imperative for, for after the tattoo that everyone always has sharps containers. Um, and for those who don't know what green soap is, it's kind of like an industry standard for uh, like a, a skin disinfectant. Um, and a lot of the times it's, it's what I use during the tattoo, but also to wipe it away at the end. Um, I also use it before I end up shaving a client's uh, site, but all around it's, it's a, I think it's a pretty standard product to use. And it just, it smells like tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I hope this was helpful to some degree. Um, and thanks again for stopping by.